Once again, it is time for another stop and jot. Make sure to grab your Module 6 handout. This lesson was all about helping us think through some of the key elements or skill areas connected to decoding and encoding, and even more importantly, about reminding us that decoding and encoding are not two separate coins, but two sides of the same coin. They should be taught together with a common goal of building understanding of sounds and letters. Some skills may be more closely connected to either decoding or encoding, but good teachers take every opportunity to build one on the other. We started by revisiting Aries phases of word recognition development through the lens of phonics and talked about how children in the pre-alphabetic phase are generally just beginning to really understand that print in whatever form, logos, brand labels, carries some form of meaning and they begin to more fully attend to sounds. They then move through the phases, partial alphabetic, full alphabetic, consolidated alphabetic and automatic. Slowly learning about individual letters and sounds, and then chunks of sounds, letter patterns, affixes, syllables, and how to use these parts to pronounce unknown words at various levels of complexity, and eventually to pull on these skills quickly and effortlessly. A key concept to hold on to, learning to read is developmental, but it is not innate. All the skills within these phases must be taught with intent and purpose by a very knowledgeable teacher. We then did a shout out for phonological awareness, discussed in detail in the previous module, to remind ourselves that this area of development is a major predictor of early reading success as the ability to hear, identify, and manipulate sounds lays the cornerstone for decoding, blending, and word reading. Another key predictor of success in reading and writing is an awareness and understanding of print concepts. These concepts of print also develop on a continuum from recognizing environmental print to recognizing parts of a book to understanding left to right directionality in reading, to recognizing words and spaces between words, to eventually understanding a one-to-one -one correspondence of words. The key idea being that both of these key elements involve a lot of fine-tuned fundamental skills, phonological awareness being all about sounds and concepts of print all about print, that should be taught simultaneously as they connect to the decoding and encoding that follows. We then quickly revisited the alphabetic principle to drive home the fact that students must understand how our language works. And since our language is based on the alphabetic principle, students must have strong knowledge of the alphabet that includes knowledge of letter names, recognition, sequencing, how they are formed, upper and lower case, and the sounds they represent. So if students do not have a strong understanding that our language is based on letters or graphemes that represent sounds or phonemes, and they do not have a knowledge base of the alphabet and letter sequencing at a basic decoding and encoding level, then they will definitely struggle at more advanced levels of decoding. Structural analysis is what we often think of when we consider advanced levels of decoding. Structural analysis is a word recognition skill that allows us to work with big words, multisyllabic words, words that have more than one part with the word part, meaning containing a vowel sound. Structure analysis casts a wide net as it covers a large area of skills. So we focused on those skills most needed for developing readers and writers in grades kindergarten through three. We quickly address the five big areas of compound words, contractions, inflectional endings, other affixes and syllabication to remind you that decoding isn't just a kindergarten or first grade skill, but one that progresses to so much more than simple sound letter correspondence. 
a great place to go when first moving students beyond working with single syllable words is with compound words, especially closed compound words. It is a great starting point because it's a more concrete concept for students to understand. And that is that big words are just made up of smaller words and eventually parts of words. And in the case of compound words, it is two whole words that come together. Introducing contractions seems to follow easily as it is still two words coming together, so we are able to build on a concept kids already know. However, in this case, the two words do not stay in their original form, but the structure of the word is altered. This then involves that dreaded but fun introduction to the apostrophe. So we started our journey into multisyllabic words with compounds and contractions, as both are built on a similar concept of two regular words coming together, then moved to the next best place. And that was talking about parts of words. We began our discussion of parts of words with inflectional endings because these are some of the most commonly used suffixes. ES, S, E, D, I, N, G, E, R, and E, S, T. Inflectional endings also provide us as teachers with a great opportunity to help students see the connection of all the skill areas involved in learning to read, grammar, for example. We discussed inflectional endings from a decoding standpoint, teaching students to recognize them and know how to separate them from the base word, to aid in decoding and pronouncing them during reading or segmenting them and using them in writing. But teaching these also provide a great opportunity to talk about nouns, verbs, and adjectives as these endings can affect their functions. Wow, our stop and jot is getting long, so let's wake up our bodies and our brains. Hands up over your head. Now take your right arm and cross over in front of the left. Now both arms straight up again and cross, this time left arm in front. Now straight up and cross right. Now up and cross left. And let's do that seven more times. Now hang with me just a bit longer. We then continued our work with other affixes. And I called it that because even though we call inflectional endings inflectional endings, they are also part of the world of affixes. Affixes relate to a letter or letters that is added to the beginning or end of a word to create a word with a different meaning. Prefixes and suffixes are considered affixes. Prefixes are bound morphemes that appear before the base word and suffixes are bound morphemes that are added to the end. Both affect the meaning of the base word in some way. We then moved into a discussion about syllables and this got a bit complicated. So just a quick reminder of the key points. There are six syllable types and these are based on vowel patterns students learned when learning to decode single syllable words. So to help them attack an unknown big word, we have to teach them the division patterns and generalizations also based on vowel patterns already known, but now with a generalization as to what those vowels tell us about where to divide. This is important because the goal is to break a big word down into manageable chunks so it is easier to decode and pronounce. Vowels are critical in syllabication because every syllable has to have one. And once parts are separated into single vowel sound parts, then old time decoding skills work. We need to teach students that when decoding, they just look at the vowels first, as this will provide direction on the sound to award that vowel when decoding. Handwriting was our next big idea. No, actually two big ideas. First, that we need to dedicate time to handwriting instruction so kids know how to form their letters correctly, not because we want their writing to look pretty, but because it aids in the orthographic mapping process. And secondly, that letter formation should be taught with decoding instruction. 
We then spent time talking about the importance of starting with lowercase letters, and I shared a basic protocol or procedure to use in teaching handwriting alongside phonics during the 30-minute phonics lesson. And our last big concept of study for this lesson was spelling. Spelling is the inverse operation from reading, but it is a more challenging process. As difficult as decoding is, the reader at least has the visual word in front of them to aid them in holding the letters and corresponding sounds in their head while trying to segment and blend to form the word. And when reading, they also have the context to help them check their work. When spelling, students don't have the visual print to look at, nor the context to help narrow the field. We also discuss that just like reading, spelling is a developmental process. So a key takeaway, spelling practices should be taught alongside decoding practices as the two support each other. That wraps up this stop and jot. Before moving on, be sure to think about these big ideas and how they might relate to your classroom instruction. 